Hi everybody, welcome back to my taxable channel. Today, in this video, we are going to look at how to read files from object storage and insert into the ATP database. Instead of that ATP, it can be any other target application wherein you can insert the data. That is what I am going to demonstrate in this video. So guys, before I start, I will ask everyone to subscribe to my channel to get regular updates. So let's get started and see how we can achieve this. So what we are going to do here, I'm considering I have two buckets, one as a standard object storage and second as an archive object storage. So what I'm going to do from the Oracle integration, I am going to read a files maybe two files, three files, whatever files are there at a particular moment. I want to read those files. I will process those files and will take the data from those files and insert into the ATP. Once the data is inserted, I will archive those files into the archive bucket and will delete from that standard object storage. That is what we are going to look at. So let's get started and see how this can be achieved via Oracle integration. So first of all, here you see I have this object bucket with the name EMP files, wherein I have two files, sample file underscore one, sample file underscore one, copy.csv. So in both the files, I have four, four records. So in total, eight records are there in both the files. Similarly, I have another bucket called EMP archive files. It's like my archive bucket. <clears throat> okay, default, that's fine, standard. Okay, what I can do, I can simply go ahead and then remove that bucket. And let me create a archive bucket. Okay, create a bucket. And let's say archive bucket and let's change its visibility to public correct i have this archive bucket as well as the standard bucket so here i have one table okay this employee table in my database atp id first name last name email address and here as of now i don't have any record so i want to fetch both the files from my object storage one by one and push into my ATP and then archive both the files from this bucket to archive and delete from here. So let's see how we can achieve this. So for that, I have already two connections created. One is the ATP connection and second is the object storage connection. If you don't know how to create an object storage connection, you can look at one of my video how to access object storage from Oracle integration that will give you an idea how we can connect to the object storage in Oracle integration. So what I am going to do, I am going to create a scheduled base integration and let's say move, move object storage data to ATP. Click on a create button. <clears throat> First of all, what I am going to do, I am going to create multiple variables here, okay? Uh, using assign action variables and click on a create button. So to connect to the object storage, I will use the object storage REST API. So for that, we need a namespace. So I will take a namespace. I can take a namespace from here, uh, go to my, tenancy. So here is my namespace. So I'll copy this and will keep as a variable. You can take it from the lookup also. Let's say bucket, bucket name. So which is my go back. So this is my bucket name from where I will read the files. And then archive bucket name. Bucket 
thing. Archive bucket name. Okay, so I will take the archive bucket name from here and we'll put it here. Correct. Now, after that, what I'm going to do, I am going to list the files from here, like we list the file from FTP. So here we have the API uh, of object is called list object, which is going to give me the listing, right? So I'll take this API and will use my object storage connection here. So here I'm going to use list files and here I will put that particular endpoint slash name slash n slash namespace name slash hyphen b slash bucket name slash o. And here uh, you see it's like uh, get so i will use the get one and it provides me the response so name is space bucket name which i will map json and here it provides me the response also in this particular format name of the files correct next and then finish here in the mapper what i am going to do i am simply going to map the name space and the bucket name from where i need to list the files fine as the next step, I need to use my for each action to loop over the files. So you see uh, list files, execute response, this is my response. Uh -oh. For each. <clears throat> so here, this is my object. I'll say current file. And I will say loop over files. Click on a create button. So it will create a loop. As the next step, I need to read file one by one. Then again, I will use the object storage rest API. Let's say read file. And here, if you come on this API documentation, it will say uh, get object. So this is the API to read the file. Okay. So here slash n slash namespace slash b bucket name slash o slash object. So here it is a get API if you see here. So again, this is a get API and this gives me the response. Okay, three parameters has been added namespace, bucket name, and then object name. And it gives me the binary data. Okay, next and then finish. Now here I need to map three things one as a namespace. Okay, namespace, the read bucket name, and then from the current file, it will give me the name of the file as the object name. Okay, as the next step, what I need to do, I'll use my stage file and dump that file into my staging. Stage file. I'll say right to the stage, next button. And then here, I'll say write file. And then specify the file name. I'll choose the same file name, this one. OK, save. And then here, I will keep in my, in my temp directory. Okay, at the next step, what I'm going to do, I am going to choose my uh, XML schema document. And here I will upload my OPEC schema. Let me just upload. 
schema next and then finish. So here, what I need to do, I simply need to map, uh, map it from this guy, read file response, execute stream reference. So here I will use one function call and code reference to base 64. Okay, and got reference to base 64. This is my stream reference. Okay, fine. Right. So it will upload the CSV file on my stage. As the next step, I need to read the file from this staging. Okay. So again, I will use my stage file. Let's say read file from stage, next button, read entire file, configure the file reference. The reference is like my read file, write file to write this guy, write response, ICS file, load more file reference. Okay, exit. Next, and here I'm going to upload my CSV file, the source file. Let me. So this is my file, which is there in my object storage to mark all as optional, make only EMP ID as a mandatory. And let's say employee and then employee said next and then finish. Now, as the next step, I need to call my ATP to insert the data, insert. Here, I'm going to use perform an operation on a table and I will use insert or create. Here, I will use my admin schema, search the table and I will use this employee table and click on the import tables. Okay, sorry. You have to simply move it to the selected tab and click on the import tables. Next and then finish. I'm going a little quick because we already know each and everything. Now, uh, read file from response, read response, employee set, employee, and here we are, employees to employee, employee ID to ID, first name to first name, last name to last name, employee address to employee address, fine. The mapping is very simple. Now, once the data is inserted, what I need to do, I need to archive the file. So I will again use my object storage connection and will say archive file. For the archival, what I'm going to do, I am going to use my I'm going to use my this guy put object, okay? Create a new object or overwrite an object with the same name. So I will use this guy. And this is my put API. I'm not using any response here. Again, name space, bucket name, object name. Okay, next, next, and then finish. Right, and here I'm going to map three things. Uh, name space. Okay, the bucket name, it will be my archive bucket name where I want to write. And then object name will be this one. Okay. So here, what I need to do, apart from this guy, name, bucket name, and then name space, that's fine. Apply. I also need to pass binary. So here, I need to select this request payload. Next, and then next, and I will say, binary content okay 
done update and in the mapper what i need to do i need to pass the file reference run file object okay so what i can do i need to use this stream reference okay so from read file response validate and then close it fine and then finally i will use again object storage to delete the file from my standard bucket delete file so again i will have the delete api this guy to delete the file permanently okay that will be my delete operation as simple as that next next and then finish fine let's open this mapper template parameter so here what i need to do i need to provide this namespace to namespace and then from which bucket i want to delete from this read bucket and the object name will be this guy okay fine and then validate and then close it now the integration is completed successfully now let's move and then enable that tracking here and let's run this integration so i am done let's save and then close this let's activate this integration enable tracing include payload activate the integration and then finally run this and we will see okay let this to be refreshed okay and then submit now fine let's open this let's wait this to be executed successfully and we'll see here you see integration is succeeded now you come here and then refresh it i should have eight records here one two three four five six seven eight that's fine go to your object storage just refresh it file has been deleted from my emp files storage bucket let's go to this guy and you see both the files are here with of 142 142 bytes so guys this is how you can read the files from object storage and move the data to the target service here atp and then archive and then delete your work files so guys that's all about this video if you like this video please like comment and share and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get regular updates you can find me on linkedin twitter facebook pinterest you can always see my blog https colon slash slash www.taxsupper.com thanks for watching the video have a good day bye bye